Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I hope my microphone is on and you can hear me. Yes, we can. If you could just mute your microphone for one second while I'll get set up, and then uh, we will begin the call. Okay. okay. I'm going to mute it. Till Thank you. Can... Excellent. Hello to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And I, again, apologies for the problems with the room earlier. My name is Adafi Onaheim. I'm here with my colleagues, Duncan Dewurst and Ben Webb. We are part of the Global Help Desk for the Open Contracting Data Standard. And I'm going to begin by saying welcome to everyone and uh, giving you a little bit of a flavor of what's going to happen today on the call. So today we're talking about open contracting tools. If you could please mute your microphones, that would be lovely. So today we're talking about the open contracting tools landscape. And what we'd like to do today is to both show you the tools that are available and for you to tell us what you need from open contracting tools to make the most out of them. So before I start, introducing the presenters and uh, I'll just cover the agenda. We're going to have the tools landscape, then we'll go on to talk about the existing tools for open contracting, and then move on to the gaps in the tools. And I know that not everyone here is completely familiar with open contracting. Um, some of you have joined us um, from maybe seeing this on Twitter, or from talking to some of our help desk colleagues or to your own colleagues who are working with open contracting and with public procurement in general. So I just want to talk a little bit about open contracting just to give you a little bit of an understanding of what it is. So every year, governments spend huge amounts of money on public contracting, which is the money that's used to build bridges, to pay for healthcare, and to build ma major infrastructure projects. So open contracting is needed because it helps to understand where that money is going. It helps to provide better value for money for governments. It helps businesses to be able to uh, obtain the contracts that they need to be able to bid for those contracts, be able to win those contracts. And it helps organizations like civil societies to monitor uh, what's going on with public procurement. And all that leads to better value for money for everyone. And today on our call, we have uh, presentations from four organizations. I'll just introduce each, um, each person. So the first person we have talking today is Charles from NRGI. Charles, would you like to just uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Charles Young. I'm, I'm based in Cape Town. I'm an open data consultant um, for NRGI, and I'll be presenting on resource contracts this morning. Thank you very much, Charles. And next, we have Sim from OpenOps. Sim, would you like to introduce yourself? OK, so we'll move on to the next presenter, and I'll introduce Sim when he can connect to the call. We have Andrew from Development Gateway. Andrew, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Andrew from Development Gateway, which is a DC-based organization. I'll be presenting two tools uh, for monitoring and evaluation uh, and for corruption risk monitoring uh, of open contracting. Thank you very much. And we have Duncan from the help desk, and he will be uh, introducing himself right now. Duncan, are you muted? Okay, I'll introduce Duncan. Duncan is part of the Global Help Desk, and he will be um, introducing OCDS Show, uh, which is a tool that's been developed by the Help Desk, and we'll be talking about how you can use OCDS Show to help you understand open contracting a little bit better. And finally, we have Carolis from the Open Contracting Partnership. Carolis, would you like to introduce yourself? 
Uh, absolutely. Thank you very much, Adape. Uh, so my name is Carolis. I'm with Open Contracting Partnership. I'm Senior Program uh, Manager. I uh, will join uh, the conversation from the needs and demand perspective. We'll have a few minutes introduction or presentation on uh, what would be an organizational need and what sort of tool Open Contracting Partnership would benefit from. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carolis. So hey, those are presenters. Duncan here, can you hear me now? Ah, great, Duncan, great. so you can introduce I've, yourself. I've <laughs> my audio problem, yes, so apologies everyone, and sorry again for technical issues on, on getting in the call in general. So, uh, yep, my name's Duncan, and I work on the uh, Global Help Desk, along with Adate and Lindsay and Tim, who you've probably spoken to at some stage, and today uh, I'll briefly present a tool that our development team has been working on called OCDS Show, uh, which allows you to visually nav navigate uh, an OCDS release or record. Thanks. Thank you, Duncan. We also have participants from all over the world. Unfortunately, we can't go through them one by one because there are quite a few of you and it would take quite a while. We appreciate you all joining, and especially after the technical hitches. We have representatives from civil society, business, and government, including the OCP Help Desk, and please say hello in the chat, the World Bank, EBRD, and from the United States, Albania, Italy, Spain, Canada, the Netherlands, Nigeria, UK, France, Nepal, Paraguay, Colombia, Germany, Greece, and the Ukraine. So have I missed anyone? Uh, please say hello in the chat and happy Valentine's to you as well, Saros. Thank you very much. We didn't deliberately pick today for the call, but it's worked out quite wonderfully because I believe you all love OCDS tools, so we're quite happy to, uh, to have you all on the call. So if we've missed your country, please shout out to us on, on the chat. And because we're slightly delayed, we're a little bit behind time, I will move on to um, the OCDS tools landscape and tell you a little bit more about the open contracting tools landscape. When we met up with a few of you at the International Open Data Conference in Madrid, we had a session on tools. And one of the things that we found was that um, there were a lot of tools, but it was really difficult to understand what tools were available. There wasn't a good list of tools that were available for everyone to, to see and to understand what tools they could use. Um, so that was, that was a problem. Um, the other problem was that we didn't actually know where the gaps were in the tools. What did you need that w wasn't being provided currently? And that's not just good for us, it's good for tool developers. So they know where the demand is. And so from what you asked us, we produced the landscape of open contracting tools. And Duncan's going to pop that into the chat now, the link to that, so that you can have a look and see um, the blog post if you haven't read it yet and understand a little bit more about the landscape yourself. While we were creating this uh, list of tools, we, con we considered how are we going to share this uh, list with people? And we were very pleased that at the OGP Summit in Paris, the uh, OGP Toolbox was the perfect platform for us to uh, allow people to track the tools and also to say, what your own needs are. So it's not just about us telling you the tools. The OGP toolbox allows you to say which tools you use and also what your experiences are and what your use cases are. So please do have a look at the blog post and also have a look at our collection. And there's a link just appeared there. And that's also on the screen being shared right now. So we have 22 open contracting tools in the toolbox to help people that use open contracting and that implement open contracting. So when we say tools for what purpose, what purpose are we talking about? Well, we have tools for publishers, so the people who are currently publishing open contracting and pr providing that information, we have tools to support them to do that. We also have tools for businesses that are engaging with um, open contracting in, in various ways, in fact. One of them will be presenting hopefully uh, soon. 
and you'll find out more about those tools and also tools for public monitoring because it's quite important for civil society for building trust for us to understand where the money is going in procurement so because of that we understand that the landscaping tools has to reflect your needs and not just ours as um, the the organization behind open contracting but yours as the people who are going to be using open contracting who are currently publishing to open contracting and who have needs around public procurement information the blog post covers the not just tools as in um, the more technical tools it also covers visualizations and dashboards the reason that we share these tools is to allow you as people who will use the tools to look over them and share your knowledge with other people there may be a dashboard out there that you think this is nearly perfect for me but it isn't quite right one thing that we did find when we looked at the tools is that unfortunately most of the tools that we we see still require quite a high level of technical knowledge to be able to reuse them but we don't know everything about the tools that are out there we don't know if they do meet your needs or not so we've set up a survey which you will find as well in the blog post so please tell us what your needs are um, you can also contact us through the help desk um, uh, the details for the uh, support are on our website so please do contact us so that's a very brief overview of the tools that are available uh, out there and I'll delve into that in a little bit more detail um, and we begin to answer your questions but what I'd like to now start the presentation with the, um, the four organizations who've been very gracious and agreed to share the tools with us and the first person I'd like to uh, hand this over to is Charles from NRGI and uh, Charles has uh, provided us with a, a lovely five minute lightning talk on the tools that NRGI is producing. Charles, are you ready to begin? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Charles and uh, take it away, Charles. Do I have access to, have access to, the, to the presentation? Yes, we can either share the content, um, with, you can share your presentation on our screen, or you can share it from your device. Okay, so if I start with my, have you seen that? Let's have a look. I can't see. Um, so, Charles, if you select the, uh, the share uh, option in the, the menu at the top and then click my screen, um, you should be able to present. If, if it doesn't work, we can share it from the side. Okay, uh, uh, no problem. Ah, yes, we can see your screen now, Charles. Okay, so I can start. Uh, I'm going to go through it quite quickly because I've only got five minutes. So although the, the presentation is, is quite long, I think it's, I think it's finished in pages uh, or slides, I'm going to go through it quite quickly. Uh, and I can always ask on the, on the questions afterwards. So this is uh, a very brief so contract, specifically uh, there to extractive contracts, that uh, oil contracts, mining contracts. Um, the reason is that um, in the extractive industry, the contracts are, are not always out there and not um, always um, out there to see. So we are in the process of uploading contracts, but also obviously making it easy then for them to find contracts. So the research contracts, you can search for contracts by country, or by resource or by contract type, for instance, you can, importantly, the contracts are annotated. So we annotate the contracts with um, the summaries. So if you're not an expert with it comes to law or contracts, you can go find specific contracts of the national contract by just clicking on certain links. Um, you can run comparisons with annotated contracts between certain countries. So you can go and say, go and find me a royalty payment in country A and compare it to another contract in a, in, in a certain country. And we can download all contract information in PDF version also in, um, also in the urban text version. Um, I'm going to go through this very quickly. Um, we involved in it, and our GI's involvement with the World Bank and CCSI, and it's funded by the UK Aid and also ALSF. Um, we use the, we use the recent contracts to support in the EICI, so section C, C, uh, people want to state that they should have this contract, so we support that. Uh, with OGT, um, 
plans, um, action plans, national action, action plans also. We support that with regards to trying to get information out there, and we are working um, at the moment with LTDC's uh, information standards to try and include that also into um, the contract. Um, so we've got to quite quickly, we not much time. So the, the global reach for reasonable contracts, we've got 89 countries where we've got about information uploaded with about 1,450 main contracts with foreign documents and 450 contracts that have been annotated. Um, the issue always comes up on what is open data, and you guys um, would obviously know what that is, but we find that a lot of ministries in Africa, for instance, say that their information is open and they've got PDF documents with contracts uploaded uh, on their website, which is great, but it really doesn't help much because it's not actually open, open, open standards, those standards. So there is a big difference. There is a big difference uh, to recent contracts and just having a PDF document uploaded on a site on a ministry website. Um, so we want to obviously not not only have the information available online and not only have the that information um, online as a document to download, but we want to have it online as open text format with metadata captures so they can search for it. The key terms, the searching, the contract comparisons, OC standards, open source software. So we try to persuade African governments to move over from just having PDF documents uploaded on their site to using the resource contracts, which is much richer, um, a lot more um, easy to um, get access. Um, there are, I'm going to skip to my, my browser for here. There are um, a couple of sites. We've got the back end site, which is used to upload all the information on the contracts. Um, and metadata is captured over there. So you can see things go, we'll, we did um, go to the back end, and we're going to capture all the metadata of the contract itself, uh, route, route, route 5, route 4, when it was captured, when it was signed, all that information. Then on the public side, we've got the, we've got the general public site where people can access information. So you can go and run searches with the contracts. So you can go and run searches with the information that's been captured. Um, I can go and say, find the Tunisian contracts uh, that are hydrocarbon, for instance, um, and a certain product type, for instance, and I can go search and find the information. So that's for the public. So all the information that's uploaded is for the public. So you can go and see over here. I can go and then search for information uh, that's been that's annotated, products been annotated. I can then go and find an annotated contract in Tunisia and then look at the annotations of that contract itself. So it will tell me here on the left-hand side all the annotated contracts, all the annotation, so the fiscal information will be down here, or the environmental information, the general information. And when I click on a link that's been captured, it will zoom to the page and tell me what that is. Um, so there's the back-end site, there's the front-end site, and then we also got country sites. So we've got a site for DRC and for um, the site of Ethiopia, so they've got their own country site, and that could be the government that's got their own site or the EIT office that has its own site. Um, so public site that I've, that I've showed you, resourcecontract.org, um, the information that you search for on the public site, the annotated contracts that you're going to find, the actual metadata of that other contract that you're going to find and search for. Um, we are, one of the use cases that we have at the moment is to do the comparison tool. So there's a comparison tool, like I said earlier on, that you can compare contracts. So if, for instance, Rand Gold, who's, who's um, involved in DRC and Senegal and in Mali, uh, if a new contract is signed in a country, the government can go and do search on royalties paid in those countries and tell Rand Gold why you're wanting 3% when actually you're paying 6% in other countries. So we're trying to use this comparison tool to help um, African governments to um, to compare to see how it's done in, in other places. Um, so that, yeah, so it means that the fair, fair stuff is going well. Um, I, think, I think one of the one of the main things is for recent contracts is not to find the bad guy. So we're not trying to expose issues. We're trying to make, make it that when a contract is signed, um, the government as well as the private company knows that the contract will be online and uh, therefore it will be a fair contract. So we're not really that interested in trying to, trying to actually find the bad guy. We're trying to make sure that the contract is signed would be a fair contract. Um, that's about it. Thank you very much, Charles, uh, for giving us a quick recap about uh, your current project and how that's going to be used um, to improve the natural resource. Uh, area worldwide. We're very interested to see that that covers quite a few countries. 
We next have, um, just to let you know, if you do have questions, please add them to the chat and we will get to them at the end of the presentation. Our next presentation is uh, by Sim. And Sim, I think you've joined the call. Could just check if you're online. Okay, so we'll see if we can get Sim back on the call shortly. Uh, he has just joined the meeting. Sim, hi. No, let's move on to Andrew. Hi, so, uh, sorry, Sim's just been on the call in front of me. He's having trouble connecting to the audio. So uh, if it would be all right, could we do something else and see if we can get him on? No problem. We'll switch over to Andrew, and that should hopefully give Sim some time to get connected. Andrew, are you ready to start your presentation? Uh, yes, I am. Let me just share my screen. Did that work? Yep, that's great. Thanks, Andrew. We can see you. Great. So thanks very much uh, to OCP for this opportunity. So today I'm going to present uh, two uh, products that we're working on um, and that use uh, open contracting data standard. And before I present those tools, a quick note that, um, so we've been uh, developing our open source procurement tool suite, um, and they're designed from a common uh, back end. So we convert government data or other data sets to an open contracting data standard uh, in a MongoDB database. And then we put it out uh, in either JSON format or spreadsheet format for people to download and use as they like. And then we have three tools actually um, to view that information with, two of which I'll be talking about today. Um, you can see the link to our uh, GitHub uh, down below on the left. Um, so the first tool that I'll be talking about uh, is our monitoring and evaluation dashboard. And this was developed um, for the Vietnam Public Procurement Authority, the PPA, uh, with the support of the World Bank. Um, we have an OCDS stripped down version of this tool that's also, public, that's also available. Um, so we can upload any OCDS data into it and visualize it um, with ease. It's an open source web-based dashboard for visualizing information related to procurement and the need um, with a focus on efficiency, competitiveness, and value for money, uh, among other things. Uh, some of the results from our Vietnam work are that uh, we found that there's increased data quality uh, through the process of working with the PPA. Um, and it really heightened their interest in data analytics and um, they found to be a very valuable tool. Um, so this is uh, the overview page of the tool. Um, the use case is that it, this is really for procurement officials, um, including procurement authorities and procuring entities to really understand how effective they are in carrying out procurement and also for public who are sort of in the know who can interpret this information um, and help uh, citizens to understand it. Um, so it is designed to be a public facing tool. Um, it also, so uh, if you, just a quick word about the basic layout. On the left hand side, uh, there's a column which helps to navigate through the different thematic areas that are covered by the tool. Um, over, across the top, uh, there are tools for sorting the data in a variety of ways, as well as exporting the data and for logging in. Um, so when a procuring entity logs in, they can see just the information relevant to their procuring entity as a starting point, and then they can um, view the entire data set uh, if they like. Uh, across the bottom, um, one can navigate between the years and months. Uh, for this data set, we have data from 2014 through 2017. Um, and then in the center console, there are charts and tables, and hovering over uh, those charts brings up additional information. Um, here we're looking at uh, procurement activity by year, which includes a list of bid plans, awards, uh, and invitations to bid uh, monthly. Um, so scrolling down the left-hand side, you can see uh, looking at the location, um, we have mapped all of the data to um, different regions, uh, and hovering over region will bring up um, charts related specifically to that region. Here we're looking at the cost effectiveness for the difference between um, the planned uh, price and the actual award price and the difference between those two. Um, now scrolling down, we um, go to the efficiency page. And the first um, visualization there is a bid timeline. 
So this is showing the awards, the invitations to bid, and the average time um, for the, from planning all the way to, to award. Um, so we can see this data in a variety of ways. So for example, if we filter through the data, um, clicking on the filters on the top, uh, we can select just the procuring entities that we'd like to see. In Vietnam, there's over 1,000 of them. Uh, we can see this information by the suppliers. We can also uh, look at procuring, procurement types, locations, and we can select a range of amounts uh, by which we would like to view the data. Um, if we click on the compare, um, then we can compare the data by a variety of different things. Um, for example, the procurement method. Uh, here we're looking at um, a, a comparison of efficiency by the different types of uh, things that they're procuring. So on the upper left-hand side is goods, um, and on the upper right-hand side um, is services combined with um, uh, other uh, goods as well. Um, so there's a variety of tools to help people navigate the data. Uh, so moving on to our corruption risk dashboard, um, this we are is our second tool. We're developing with Open Contracting Partnerships engagement and support, and we have um, published together a uh, uh, a publication that's on the OCP website that um, explains a bit more about our methodology. Um, this is also an open source tool. It uses the same M&E dash uh, backend as the as the M&E dashboard. And it visualizes um, three types of corruption risk. And presently, we're using data from Vietnam, Ukraine, and hopefully soon from Georgia to test it out. It'll be publicly available uh, and, and ready by hopefully the end of March. So just a quick note on our theoretical framework. We're looking at fraud, collusion, and what we call process rigging. Process rigging is um, rigging across any of uh, the phases of the procurement process. Uh, and it usually means that there's sort of government and supplier involvement or just government involvement in that. Um, our definition of collusion, it just focuses solely on collusion between um, suppliers and not with government. Uh, we have identified 66 um, flags that were, uh, we've currently built out around 10, and we'll be including that on our release uh, at the end of March. Um, the flags are roughly um, you know, broken down only into their own, um, they're, they're mapped to a specific uh, corruption type, uh, but a few of them overlap with, uh, with multiple areas. So here's a look at uh, the corruption risk uh, overview page. Uh, again, it's set up like very much like the, uh, the M&E dashboard, um, where you have your three corruption types, risk types, uh, on the left-hand side, and then across the top you have uh, a variety of filters. In the center, you have your main, um, your main graph, which is usually a line chart thus far. And below, you'll have a, a list of, uh, of different uh, projects, either, either um, uh, tenders or contracts, um, awards that, are, that meet multiple flags. So if we clicked on the left-hand side on the fraud, um, this is what would appear. It's the fraud overview page, and it shows all of the different indicators um, that we've built out so far. Um, clicking on an individual indicator, um, you come to a page that shows only that indicator, as well as a list of contracts that um, raise that flag, as well as other similar flags. Uh, that, as well as the number of other flags of that same corruption risk type. Um, some of the information that we can also see when you hover over is um, how many flags uh, are eligible, or how many contracts are eligible for that flag, how many flags have been hit, um, and then the percentage of, uh, of flags and the percentage of eligible um, contracts for that type. So usually we found that only a very small amount of um, contracts are even eligible, <coughs> excuse me, for to be flagged for any specific indicator. Um, Andrew, just a, just a heads up that um, time, timing-wise, uh, if we could wrap it up in the next couple of minutes, one. that'd be great. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sure. Um, so this is um, our cross-tab, um, which sh will show any uh, two uh, flags of the same type, of the same corruption type. So for example, this 
would be just fraud um, against the other ones. Uh, and what you can see here is the percentage of overlap between any two flags. Um, and we'll have a description uh, of that with the hover over. So in this particular instance, um, you can see the number of and the, percent, the percentage of, uh, uh, of contracts that um, have a whole percentage bid, uh, that have bid prices that are a whole percentage apart uh, against other, flat, other uh, uh, flags that, meet, uh, that have only a winning eligible bidder. Um, so this is a really effective way to explore the data um, and to explore the overlap between different flags of the same corruption risk type. Um, so that's it. Um, thanks for your time, and I look forward to any questions that you might have. I have no idea how to unshare. There we go. Uh, Thank you very much, Andrew. That was wonderful. And uh, please do add questions for Andrew to the chat, and we'll get through to them in the next session, after the next uh, couple of sessions, rather. So we have Sim from OpenOps. I'm hoping that you've managed to connect, Sim. Are you there? Um, I'm afraid Sim didn't manage to connect, but I'm okay to do a presentation on the screen so I just to figure out how to do it um, and then get back. Um, how do you share the screen on this? You should now have a share content button on your screen. Okay, to great. Share. Great, yeah. you can see that. Thank you so much, Helen. Hey. Okay, so I just want to introduce everyone to OpenOps, which is now live and completely free to use. Um, our website is openops.com and the idea is that it's a tender search site for um, all government contracts and we are currently, we've got TED tenders, we've got contracts find tenders for UK but we're also scraping globally as well so I think we've got 72 different countries in here at the moment. Um, and the idea is that you can search on keyword, so we've got construction as a keyword here. We've also got um, countries, so we've got United Kingdom and Europe, um, but then also everywhere else we've got taking um, contracts from. We can search by location, we can also search by uh, public sector buyer, published date, and CPV code. And we've put our, um, our tenders into the OCD, into the OCDS for indexing. We've also, while we've got CPV code here, we're also working on um, filtering by pro class classification as well. So, just to give it a little bit of an example. Um, so here, all over the world. Um, and then we've got the information there, including a link to original, and we've um, attached an OCDS ID to everything. Um, what we're going to do at the moment, this website's just got live tenders. We're going to do um, add contracts. That's what we're working on at the moment. And we're also going to um, do um, past tenders as well. So that's our next stage for including past tenders and contracts and trying to link up the two as well so you can see what was bid, what was, what was, um, Sorry, what was tendered for and what was actually contracted um, where you can. Um, and yeah, I'm afraid I can't answer too much of the technical stuff. A sim is in the meeting, he just can't hear the audio. So if you add questions, I can either um, share them with him or I can, um, or maybe he might be able to see them coming up. Um, and yeah, that's just it for the moment. Um, Thank you much. so much for that. Um, you, you saved us there, Helen, uh, giving us that demo. Thank you very much. Uh, as you can see, OpenOps is a, a tool that helps anyone looking for a, a tender opportunity. So it, it's a great example of a tool, possibly uh, well at the other end, where you don't need any technical expertise to, to use the tool. And it's a great example of using open contracting uh, information apart from just having it as a, as a set of files. So I'm aware that we are running quite quite behind. So we'll do a very quick demo of OCDS show. Duncan's going to do that for you now. And then we'll move on to uh, the next segment. So I'll just hand back to Duncan to do OCDS show. 
Hi everybody, so just um, we wanted to share a very quick demo of a prototype tool that our development team has been working on here. Um, this is a slightly different type of tool to uh, the other ones we've looked at so far, which um, tend to be around uh, analysing uh, steps of contracts. Um, the idea behind the OCDS show is rather than looking at multiple contracts or contracting processes, uh, it's a tool for visualizing a single OCDS record, um, so a record about a single contracting process. Um, as I said, it's very much in its prototype stage, and the tool itself is intended really uh, as a framework to be built on by people who want to build uh, sort of snazzier visualizations of a, uh, of a contracting process. Uh, and what we've tried to do with the prototype is just implement some of the, the key tricky features that require uh, the knowledge of the structure of OCDS uh, so that this can be reused by uh, anybody who wants to theme and add extra visual layers on, on top of the tool. Um, so on a technical level, um, the tool is built using the Nunjux templating language, um, which is a templating language that runs in JavaScript, so the tool runs entirely in a browser. Um, the instance we're looking at now is running on, on GitHub pages, so you don't need any infrastructure to, to run the tool. Um, and I'll pop a link in the chat uh, after I've talked through this, and anybody can go on there and explore it. And um, very simply, in two minutes, how it works is you can upload your OCDS release or record. I've already uploaded a sample data uh, record here. And what the tool does is it allows you to navigate through each of the releases uh, that make up that record. So in this case, we have uh, the first release here is a planning release. Uh, the second release here is a tender release. Third release is an amendment. We've got an award and a contract, etc. Uh, and then at each stage, um, it lays out the different sections of the OCDS schema. So down the left-hand side here, effectively, we've got a navigation bar with the different sections of OCDS for the, the metadata for the uh, the package uh, of, of the, the release or record, the uh, procuring entity, uh, including the different sections that we have in our organization building block in OCDS, so a contact point, an address, and an identifier. Um, same for the buyer. We have a planning section with budget information, documents, with links to documents, and the tender section with all the tender information. In this case, I'm looking at a planning release, and you can see that uh, lots of the information isn't yet provided in the tender section. If I jump forward to our tender release, you can see the tool now flags where information has changed. So I can go into the tender, I can see the status has changed to active, and some of these fields which weren't, weren't filled previously have now got data in, and they're flagged as new fields. Um, so really that's, um, I think, a, a two-minute version of, uh, of OCDS show. I would encourage you to, uh, to go and have a play about with it and try loading some of your own OCDS data in to see, uh, to see how it works. And as I said, essentially what we've tried to do is implement some key functionality and also uh, kind of structure the information that's in an OCDS release uh, and out so that the, the work has been done to kind of interpret and assign uh, significance to that information based on the uh, the size of the font and the location in the layout so that somebody who doesn't have the immediate knowledge of the OCDS schema can still take this uh, and apply some cool themes or some cool charts to any of the, the tabular data that's in there. Um, so happy to answer questions on that and I'll just uh, stop sharing my screen now and hand back over to Adafe. Thank you very much Duncan. As you can see that what we focus on at the help desk is to provide some of the tools that require maybe a little bit more in-depth knowledge of, of OCDS so that tool developers can work on tools that provide more of the needs that you have and so that we can ensure that they continue to do so please do have a look at the survey and let us know what your needs would be around uh, procurement. I have talked to a few people um, about the call, about the tools call before the call. And I know that some of you um, were perhaps just being introduced to open contracting. So please do contact us on the help desk. And we are always happy to talk to you about open contracting. We're also happy to um, put you in touch to, with the right people and um, 
signpost you to the right resources if needed. So what we're going to do next is that we, we've done a lot of talking and there's not been a lot of participation, opportunity to participate from yourselves. So we now have a, our Q&A session where we're going to answer some of your questions. We have some questions already in the chat, but please do add your questions to the chat and we will uh, go through the questions and um, ask the presenters that you've tapped um, the questions in the chat. So please do add to them. We've got first uh, questions for Charles. Charles, are you, are you uh, happy to take some questions? Yeah, Great. So I, I had a question about um, integrating OCDS into the NRGI project. And uh, could you tell us if you had any plans to do so and uh, what, you know, briefly what you were thinking about doing around integrating with open contracting? Yeah, so we are in the process of doing that. We did start it at the, we did ask, um, we did, did explore discussions with that in Spain last year, um, the conference, at the other conference. Uh, so we are at the moment with other contractors looking at developing an OCDS extension for the extractive industry. Um, so we, we have started with that. Um, we are in the process working on that. That's great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And Charles, am I, am, I, so I'm, I'm, am I correct in understanding that you're already assigning um, OCIDs, the, the open contracting identifies to your contracts? Yeah, absolutely right. Okay, great. That's great. Thank you very much. And uh, Duncan, do you want to add anything about extractive to that answer? Uh, probably not at, at this stage. I think we're at, yeah we're in the the early stages of uh, exploring the extensions that would be needed to OCDS to to capture uh, the differences uh, in an extractive contracting process to a procurement contracting process. Um, right now, um, we are working towards finalising our public private partnerships extension, uh, and we expect that a lot of the uh, changes and additions that are made to reflect um, contracts in the public in the world of public private partnerships uh, will be applicable to the uh, or, or reusable for um, uh, contracts in the extractive industry. So um, that's uh, kind of the avenue we'll be uh, we'll be exploring next for extractors. That's great. Thank you very much. And we have a question, uh, another question for Charles. And this is, uh, I apologise, not for Charles, for Andrew. Andrew, are you available to take a question? I am here. Great. Hi. So uh, there's a question from Miroslav, who wants to know the biggest data set in terms of numbers of tenders slash contracts that are being loaded into OC Explorer successfully. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. I'm trying to get the exact numbers. I know um, with our uh, corruption risk dashboard, we're using a 400,000 from Vietnam, but our total, that's only a small part of the database. Um, I think we're using around, you know, uh, 1.5 million or so. Um, we believe that we can see up to 3 million uh, or so without having any problems. Um, beyond that, we would need to do some uh, some more work to, to get it going, but I think um, that's something we would do when, when the time comes. That's great. Marislav, do you have a follow-up question to that? No. Great. So, um, Andrew, are you happy for uh, folks to get in touch with you if they have questions Absolutely. around this? Brilliant. So uh, please do, uh, what we'll do at the end of this is we'll send out the links and uh, please do get in touch with Andrew if you have any questions around either of the products that he's demonstrated today. So thank um, you I think there was, there was one more question for Andrew. I'm not, I'm not sure if it uh, appeared in the public chat, but it was from, uh, from Abdu, who I believe is joining the call from his holidays. So he, he, Abdu really loves those CDF tools. <laughs> but, um, the the question was: uh, Is there already an online version of the uh, the M and E dashboard and the uh, the corruption risk tool to play with, Andrew? Or is or, or when when would that be available? That is a very good question. Um, we have been in touch with you know the procurement authority in Vietnam and and uh, are awaiting um, their green light. Um, we're hoping to get that in the next month or so uh, to provide the tool with their data. Um, the, the 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 tools can be replicated or they can be forked from um, GitHub. 
Um, so anybody is free to do that right now. Um, we expect to have a functioning version uh, live online um, with data in it of the of the correction risk tool, um, hopefully by the end of March. Um, so ho but hopefully we'll get uh, the M and E tool out there before that, but we'll have to see. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andrea. We also have a question from Johanna. And Johanna, this is to Andrew. How can you reuse the dashboard for data from other countries? I think you've touched on that, but would you like to just uh, clear that up again, Andrew? Yeah, sure. So, uh, so basically what we can do is we can talk after and either you can send us data and we can, you know, figure out a way to do that um, or you can fork it um, and put the data in yourself. So. Um, it's really up to you, and I'm happy to talk about that um, off, uh, offline later or something like that. Thank you very much. So I'll set up an, int an introduction between yourself and Johanna so that, that can, uh, we can get that sorted offline. And uh, we have more questions for Andrew. It's very popular today. Um, the next question we have is, has OC... I um, apologize, I'll start with Madeline's question. Question for Andrew, could you briefly explain how the Corruption Gateway is a useful tool for business? Yeah, sure. So, well, we think either of these tools would be useful for business um, if, you know, they're really, they're really focused on procurement. So if any business is, is conducting procurement themselves, um, if they're purchasing different things, then it would be um, potentially very useful. Um, we would change perhaps some of the indicators a bit to um, each, um, you know, client's needs, uh, and that's normal. That's something that would be done with any, um, you know, different procurement system or any government. Um, but all in all, um, anybody who's doing procurement, I think, can find value in a lot of these indicators. Most of the indicators are not things that um, have come to us out of uh, thin air. Um, many other organizations, um, you know, um, are using similar indicators, whether that's the DigiWisp consortium or uh, OpenOps or whomever, uh, you know, we have somewhat similar um, indicators. So uh, I think, you know, corruption risk, uh, for example, tends to be, uh, to have similar features um, and we're using a discrete um, set of indicators through, you know, that are based on data in OCDS. So if your data is in OCDS, um, then, you know, most of our tools should be applicable. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, does that answer your question, Madeline? Great. Thank you. She says yes, in case you haven't seen the chat. And we have a question from Lorena. Uh, Lorena, would you like to um, ask your question yourself? Hi, sure. Um, so one of the things that we've been exploring is how to integrate something that the the treasury is using to catalog goods and services and that's the UN catalog. It is very, very disaggregate and I think it would be very useful in, in this kind of tools that let, com uh, let you compare from country to country that do not speak the same language. So you have the search engine and you don't write like um, construction because it's not going to be labeled like construction in Mexico for example, or any uh, Spanish-speaking country. So I don't know if the open contracting has explored using uh, this catalog as, as some kind of way to, to make it comparable between languages. So that's the question. <laughs> Um, so I'm, I'm happy to speak to that one from, from the help desk point of view. So uh, on a technical level, the uh, OCDS schema includes uh, a classifications block, which can be applied to the, the goods or services that are being procured. And using that class classifications block, you can state what catalog or classification scheme uh, you're using in the code from that scheme that describes the, the goods or, or services being procured. Um, and we actually have an additional classifications array as well. So where we see some uh, countries using different um, types of uh, different goods and services schemes, so the, the UN scheme being one, 
um, the common procurement vocabulary being the one that's in use in, in Europe and others in use in, in, in South America. Um, it is possible to include multiple schemes and classifications against an item, um, but we don't sort of dictate that that uh, has to be done. Um, so ultimately, by providing the, the space for the classification scheme and code, um, that means that if somebody else has produced a crosswalk or a mapping between different classification schemes or a mapping to um, uh, mapping to the UN scheme, then you could use the OCDS data in conjunction with that um, in conjunction with uh, that mapping to to be able to get comparable data even where different classifications are in use in different countries. So technically, uh, technically possible, um, and again, I guess it's this balance that we always find when we're designing the schema and the guidance of how much of the effort should be on the part of the publisher to publish against, say, multiple classifications, and how much of the effort should be on the part of the user of the data uh, to take the local classification and find a mapping of that to uh, a global classification like the UN one. Does, does that answer the question, Lorena? It does, thank you. Great, thanks. Thank you very much. So we have a, a question from Miroslav to Duncan. Miroslav, do you want to ask that question? Hello, uh, Duncan. The question is about the uh, releases with expansions. So will be will to be able to cope with them? Uh, what uh, level of extension support tool has or is planned to have? So at, at present, um, the way OCDS show works is that the, the templating, if you like, the, the laying out of the OCS, OCDS data uh, into the tool is um, effectively done manually. So we've done that for the core schema. Um, we're also producing a version of the tool um, for the PPP extension, which includes many of the um, updates that will form part of the version one update of uh, version 1.1 update of OCDS as well. Um, so the tool will be developed in line with the upgrades to OCDS, but I don't believe you'll be able to load an arbitrary extension or an ar or a piece of data based on an arbitrary extension into it because you would need to template out. Uh, how you want that to be laid out. Um, where extensions are using existing building blocks, then uh, that should work okay. Um, but there will be some manual uh, steps involved to, to extend OCDS show to, to work with extensions. Um, it is an open source tool. The templating language is very uh, simple to use. You don't need much more than kind of basic HTML knowledge um, to work with it. But, uh, but yeah, we haven't got a kind of automatic mechanism for, uh, for taking an arbitrary extension and, and laying that out. Okay, so something like um, extension that you already have uh, proposed, uh, it still cannot be not supported, can, can be not supported, uh, but some will be. So this is just uh, what's uh, on specific case-by-case uh, -case basis. Am I correct? Yeah, so the, the core changes to the standard in version 1.1 will be um, supported, as will the core extensions, um, but outside of, of what we consider a core extension, then they won't be supported. Or, as I, I mean, as I say, the, the code is available open source to be, to be added to by the, by the people who develop those extensions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, and thanks, Duncan, for, for answering those questions. And we are almost out of time for questions, but if you do have any that we haven't answered, please do get in touch with us. You can complete this survey, or you can get in touch with the help desk, and we will put you in touch with the right people or point you to the right resources. I also have a quick shout out to Johan, who's joined the call. Um, and he is part of the team who developed the OGP toolbox so if you have specific questions for Johan, please do add them to the chat or again, get in touch with us. And we're happy to pass this on, or to introduce you to Johan. And please do check out the OCDS collection um, on the OGP toolbox.
So next we have a session on the OCDS talk gaps. And the first speaker we have is Carolis. Carolis, are you ready to give your presentation? Uh, hello, yes. Uh, Adapta, would you please uh, put up my presentation from your end so I can just quickly look at my notes here. Would that be okay or would you want to share me to share the screen? No, that's fine. I'll, I'll get that. Um, I'll okay. Sure really. Uh, Carolus, are you are you there? I don't think we can hear you. Yes, now I'm here. My sound was off. Do you um, are we ready? Uh, apologies. There we go. <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Adapa. Thanks uh, to all the presenters. I think that especially with Andrew's um, presentation, a lot of the demand that I'm going to be expressing is addressed by. Uh, that presentation, but I just wanted, because of the opportunity that we have right now with a number of people in the community being present in the call, and with us a bit scratching our heads lately uh, in in terms of uh, not having the the very sort of right and to uh, the tool that helps us do something, I thought it makes a lot of sense just to sort of talk about it in the call. So. Uh, as an organization, Open Contracting Partnership uh, invests a lot of um, brain power to grasping the impact of open contracting initiatives around the world. Uh, we call it uh, monitoring, evaluation, and learning. And since uh, the amount of data have been uh, and amount of information have been growing exponentially lately with the increasing amount of commitments and increasing amounts of governments actually doing open contracting. We realize that uh, it's not very difficult to track the, it's not very easy to track impact across the board. So, uh, for instance, just to uh, give you an example, for instance, we do have a couple of uh, Sorry, I'm just uh, reducing my volume because I can hear myself and that's distracting. Okay, so uh, for instance, with a couple of the projects that we have in Nepal, in Ukraine, in Mexico, uh, we're trying to understand how open contracting um, initiatives have impact over efficiency of procurement processes, how they have impact on uh, value for money of the procurement system, how they affect integrity, and things like that. And obviously, those things can be affected by a number of reasons. And what we want to be um, excellent at, what we want to learn about more is how specific actions and spe specific sort of interventions and specific initiatives on the ground result in a certain impact. So just to give you an example, for instance, it would be great to understand how the availability of open contracting data and how discoverability of that data and use of business, for instance, increase uh, competition levels. So for the, for the moment, we do have a lot of fragmented numbers from a number of countries, but it's sort of difficult to try and contextualize that information and try to consolidate that information to one place. So essentially what we're looking in terms of need and what we would need is a comprehensive monitoring and evaluation sort of tool that would help us uh, work with uh, the data which is sourced uh, from OCDS compliant data sets, which uh, uh, is inputted manually. So for instance, survey results, uh, or that is for instance, qualitative data, right? So for instance, legislative uh, updates. So having that sort of data as an input and uh, showing the impact numbers we would like to understand how these impact numbers 
are affected by our actions in one place. So basically, we would like to track all the outcomes and impacts created by open contracting um, uh, initiatives. We would like to see connections between our inputs and outcomes or impacts. And we would like to compare between countries. So then we, as an organization, would have a comprehensive tool that would allow us to see uh, what is the best choice in terms of what are the steps uh, to be taken in a given country uh, should we want to achieve one impact or another impact. That would be a great learning resource, not only for open contracting partnership, but also for a larger community, and that is something that we are very much in need. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Krolis. We're right on time. We now have a few minutes to talk about your needs and to answer a few more questions. So if you want to talk about what you need to really make the most out of open contracts and procurement, if you'd like to touch on something that your organization needs or your sector needs, uh, please let us know in the chat and we'll follow up um, and have, give me a few minutes to share that with the rest of the community. Um, if there are any questions, please put them in the chat and we will be able to um, put you in touch with Corollis or with the rest of the OCP team. And uh, we're here to take your questions, so please share them with us. Um, the main question that we had at the International Open Data Conference in Madrid was around tools for um, non-government organizations. And that was around uh, monitoring uh, corruption, mainly, and also looking at understanding uh, procurement. One of the main needs that was talked about was how to help citizens understand how procurement affects um, them on a day-to-day -day basis. That was brought up as well. So those are the sort of challenges, um, aside from the technical challenges, that we know that are out there that people are asking for. So your needs don't need to be technical. They don't need to be about data per se, um, but more about what procurement, having the procurement information can do for you. So we have a question here from Marisla, and he's asking if there are an index of OCD publishers and their release locations maintained somewhere, who is maintaining it and how to apply? So I will put the question to Duncan. Duncan, would you like to answer that? I see Lindsay's popped up uh, to answer that, which is very good of it. So I will just make sure she's unmuted. Hi, I'm here. Hi everyone. Um, so to answer your question, Miroslav, this is exactly the type of reflection that we've been having in OCP over the past uh, couple of months since we are kind of reaching a point where things are really taking off uh, around the world. And this is exactly what we what we wanted is that this is about building a field rather than being a field and that this ecosystem has to take on a life of its own and we're very happy to see that happening. At the same time, we're very committed to monitoring, evaluating and learning from what's, what's happening in order to, um, you know, be able to, to promote the sharing of knowledge and learning uh, across the different contexts in which open contracting is um, is being experimented with and being implemented. So it's actually something that's on the to-do list uh, to take a look and see what is a manageable thing to track and maintain and update in terms of what's happening with the field being built, including who are the publishers and where is the data. Those are probably two, two of the main questions that people are coming to us with more and more. Uh, so we are trying to have a dedicated space on our website, on the OCP website, to show that information. And hopefully we'll be um, relaunching that space in the coming months. And that's something that we'll be sharing with the community as soon as kind of we're ready uh, and have a plan in place about how we would be able to maintain it. Marisla, does that answer your question? Yes, sorry for the delay, a little bit difficult to unmute on iPad. So thank you, Lindsay, for extensive answer. This is just what I wanted to hear. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Are there any other questions either for the OCP team, for the help desk, for any of the tools developers who've been uh, presenting? Or if you have a general question that you want to ask, please do uh, pop it in the chat and we will be happy to answer those questions for you. There was a, there was a question here in the chat for Helen and the OpenOps team from, from Patrick uh, around access to data. So, um, Hi, sorry, I didn't see that. Um, could you... No, I, think it, I think it came through privately. Let me just see. Uh, uh, okay. I can't see Patrick in our attendee list. But, but I shall Unfortunately, ask Patrick, for him had anyway. to, Patrick has had to uh, to leave, so oh, we'll okay. we'll ask the question and see if we can get uh, you two of you introduced. He was he was interested to know uh, how how you go about accessing the data from all the countries that um, are included in the Open Ops platform. Oh, okay, right. Um, so we have generally we're using scrapers um, to access various open tender, tender portals. Um, sometimes we have to go a bit deeper than, than that. Um, I can get in touch with Sim and he'll be able to give uh, more details for that. So if you pass me Patrick's email, I'll be able to put him in touch with Sim and they can talk that through. That's great. Thank you very much. That'll be really useful. So we'll do that offline. Okay. And uh, thank you very much. Is there are there any other questions? Um, from the community for any any of us, or would anyone like to talk about the needs within your sector, within your organisation, um, for open contracting? Do you let us know. We also have a small period of reflection to, to go through, um, to, just to see your reactions. So if you have, haven't got any questions right now, don't forget that you can contact the help desk. You can also fill in our surveys. And also, um, let us know what you're thinking, what's your reactions to the tools that have been shown, what do you think we need to be doing more of, and where do you think the gaps are. So please do pop your questions in the chat, and we'll uh, pass over the microphone so that you can share that with the community. See if we get any questions. Otherwise, we'll go into a summary. If there are no questions. So there's what's happened next. Um, now that we've had the tools call, and it's been great to have all the presenters and to see all the tools that are available. The tool survey link has just appeared in the chat. So please do use that to let us know what you think, your reactions, and what your needs are. I think it's really important for us as a community uh, to understand the needs that are out there so that the tools developers can develop the right tools that actually meet your needs and so that we can make open contracting more useful um, in a variety of sectors um, rather than it just being something that can be used when you're uh, very technical. We want it to be uh, achieving its aim of opening up procurement for everyone and that means that we, we need to put the right tools as well as having the conversations with people within uh, the field and saying what, what is it you need, what, what you're trying to achieve um, what's it going to be like once you've completed your project and your implementation? So that's quite important. I'm just going to pop into the chat the contact email. If you'd like to get in touch with us and you haven't been in touch with us before, um, I'm putting our contact details into the chat. So please do send us an email. And again, we'll be happy to speak with you about open contracting either at a policy level or at a technical level, we have the OCP team and we have the help desk and we're both happy to help you with any questions that you might have. And if there are no more questions, then I'm gonna call the end of the end of the call and thank you all for joining us. What's gonna happen next is we're going to send out the recording and a link to all the slides, as well as a link to the tools that have been demonstrated so you can have a look for yourself. If there are no more questions, I'll end the call. Thank you very much. And just, uh, just very quickly, in terms of the survey, the, the link that's in the chat there is a survey about OCDS tools to understand what tools you need and uh, yeah, what your requirements are in that area. There is a second survey, uh, which is just a survey about today's call, where we would very much like to hear your feedback. So I will pop that link there for everybody as well. That's great. Thank you very much. And we hope to speak to you all soon.
Thanks, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day.